Good evening, good evening. Come on in. I'm going to give a few minutes for you all to join in. Good evening, good evening. It is Monday, the day after Easter, the day after we celebrated our resurrected Savior. And what a glorious day it was. I am so happy to be here with you. My name is Lynette. I am a intercessory prayer and a writer, a blog writer and speaker for International Women's Ministries. And I am so glad to be here with you this evening. It is such a pleasure to serve the Lord and to be a part of this wonderful, wonderful ministry that is just doing great things all over the um, the Globe, as you may know, International Women's Ministries, um, the vision is to wipe the tears of our sisters all over the globe. And that's what we are doing. We already um, had a missions trip to the Philippines um, in February. And now we have uh, Ashley Nelson, one of our board members, and uh, Erica Wilkening. She is a pastor's wife um, who are there in Nicaragua mm -hmm. as we speak, um, ministering to leaders there, um, equipping them, training them out in the field so we are so happy that we can be a part of what the lord is doing all over the world and so we would love for you to support us in any way that you can with your prayers if you would like to donate i believe there's a link in the comments for that to support us in what we're doing all over the world and again so if you could pray for erica and ashley um in nicaragua right now we are just we're just loving seeing the photographs of them um, just washing feet and just serving the women there in Nicaragua. And so we're going to lift them up as well as the missionaries that uh, that we help. Um, and just they're doing God's work all over Philippines, Nicaragua, Kenya. We have a lot of missions trips coming up this year. A lot of work that the Lord has for us to do all over and we are happy to do it, right? Because the Lord tells us to go and we go, right? That is our our mission to go and make disciples of all nations. And so that is something that the Lord has given all of us to do. And so we are happy to do it. And so I'm just, again, I'm just overflowing from yesterday from our resurrection Sunday and you know it's not just a day yes we celebrate Easter and we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior and we are thankful and we go to church and we we do all the wonderful things that we do on Easter Sunday but we can't just leave it on Easter Sunday we have to live it we have to live like our Savior is alive because he is He's our living God, and we should be walking around every day in light of the cross, in light of what he did for us, the greatest gift ever given and ever will be given, just the greatest sacrifice. You know, when we think about what he endured for each and every one of us, what he endured, the torture, the, the flogging, the mocking, the spitting, the, it is incomprehensible what he had to go through for us. And so we should live every single day in light of what he did for us. And I am just truly, truly thankful that we serve a living God. And so, you know, I just want to encourage us to remember that, not just on one day, not just on a holiday, not just on Holy Week, but that we would live that every single day. And I know that that's difficult to do sometimes, you know, we get distracted by life. You know, life has its ups and downs and its peaks and valleys. And, you know, we're going about our days and doing the things that we do. And sometimes we just, it's not that we forget God. We love God and we, we serve him. We pray and we get in the word, but we forget about the true sacrifice that Jesus made, that he paid it all for us. 
that he forgave all of our sins, each and every one of us. And so I think about that when we want to hold on to grudges and we want to not forgive people for little silly things and offenses, you know, that are nothing compared to what Jesus forget. He forgives all of us, you know, and so when you think about the totality of it and how we just refuse to forgive sometimes and, you know, our culture will say, oh, we canceled someone or, you know, even in uh, even as a follower of Christ, sometimes, you know, we want to stop speaking to someone or we want to, you know, avoid them instead of just learning to address situations the way that we are taught to in his word, you know, to go and speak with that person and, and try to work it out and reconcile with them. And sometimes it's not, you know, a situation that can be reconciled, but we can forgive. We can still choose to forgive in light of what Jesus has done for us. And so that is something that I am taking to heart and just wanting to continually remind myself to live daily in light of what Jesus has done for us and so that we can live in humility. We can live in a constant posture, posture of humility and thanksgiving, you know, um, just to live in a way that we would not be thinking of ourselves all of the time and be thinking of others and the needs around us. And, you know, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about how we rush through life, you know, we live in a very fast paced um, world and everything is, you know, there's always something going on. There's always lots of distractions. There's always lots of things for us to do. Um, and so we're rushing and we, we don't tend to have a lot of patience. And so we know that patience is a virtue. We know that patience is a fruit of the spirit. And so I was thinking about that and um, Saturday, the day before Easter, um, I needed to go to the grocery store and I had one thing that I needed to get. And it wasn't that I procrastinated. Um, I had been looking for this one item for a few days, um, went to a couple of different grocery stores. They didn't have it. So I looked it up and I said, OK, it's at Safeway. I'll go to Safeway and pick up this item. Just one item. Now, I didn't want to go to the store on, e on the day before Easter. I, I figured it was probably going to be very crowded. So I really didn't want to go, but I had to go and get this one item. So I put in my GPS, Safeway, the nearest Safeway to me. And I knew where it was, generally speaking, but I needed the direction just to make sure I got there. Um, and so I get in my car and I turn the GPS on, on my phone, uh, you know, maps on my phone. And it froze. It froze. I'd already put in, you know, the the uh, Safeway nearest me and it, you know, brought up the closest one, which was like nine minutes away. So I put that in and it froze. And so me and my rushing, 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 I didn't want to wait. You know, I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on and, you know, get it going. I, I need to go, you know, and why I was rushing, I don't even know. I didn't have anything else I needed to do that day other than to make something, uh, make a dish for Sunday. And so, but no, I'm just, I got to hurry up. I got to get there, you know, and so I, I turn it back on and I clicked on. I just clicked it on and just let the directions take me where I needed to go. So I'm driving and I'm driving along and I'm thinking, hmm, this doesn't seem like it sort of looked familiar, but I think it might have been familiar to somewhere else I had gone in the past. Um, keep in mind, I've only been living in this area for about a year, so I haven't done a whole lot of um, discovering what's around in this area. But... So I'm driving and I'm driving and I'm driving and I'm thinking, something's not right. This isn't right. I don't know. Something's not right about this. And um, and it was taking longer than it should have taken. And I'm looking around and again, it's looking kind of familiar. So I think I'd been in that area probably for some other reason. But then it tells me like, you're here. And I'm like, I'm here. And I see the sign for a Safeway and there's like a garage and everything. And I'm like, this is not the Safeway I was that I wanted to go to. This is not the one. And so in my rush to just put in whatever, and I guess it just took me to 
a different safe way in Rockville that was further away. Instead of nine minutes away, it was 19 minutes away, but it was a safe way in Rockville. There's multiple ones. And so it took me there instead of the closer one because I'm rushing and I'm just like, Boop, you know, and so I was thinking about that and how, you know, I mean, that was not a major thing because it was only, you know, 10 minutes further down the road. And so, again, I wasn't in a rush to get anywhere. The store was actually almost empty. So that was a blessing. But just thinking about how we rush ahead of God, right? In this particular instance, this is you know, just an example of us rushing and this could have, you know, I, I could have been, it could have been a lot worse than it was. But for us as Christ followers, it's important for us to wait on God, right? We, none of us like to wait. We don't enjoy waiting at all. Waiting is not fun, but we know that we serve him and we need to wait on him to give us direction and to help us with our daily lives. And there are times in our life when, you know, we should be seeking him every single day. We should seek him every day for everything. But we, there are times in our lives when we know we need to make a major decision. And so we need to wait on the Lord to help us to make that decision. But oftentimes we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait. We want to rush ahead because we're tired of waiting. We've waited too long. Although we've got a million and one different uh, examples in the Bible of people waiting for years and years and years obediently and so when they do then we see the end result of that because we want to be in the will of God and so in order to be in the will of God we must wait and so you know just thinking about that and how when we rush ahead of him it never works out for our good it does not and so if we look at that and we look at those times I know I can name a few times when I was just just tired of waiting, just wanted to rush ahead, just do my own thing. And then it does not turn out well for me. And so it's almost like you've taken a couple of steps backwards to finally move forward again because you are not in the will of God. You have not been obedient because you wanted to rush ahead. You didn't want to wait on him. And that is just not the way we should live as a follower of Christ. We should always be walking in step with the spirit of God. We should always be in his word, praying and waiting on him to give us direction. And he will, in his timing, not in ours. So we need to wait and understand that whatever it is that he has for us is worth waiting for. It's worth waiting for because our God is omniscient. Our God knows the end from the beginning. We do not. We are not God. He is God. And so we need to remember to trust him because he is a rewarder of obedience, of faith, right? Without faith, we cannot please God. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 11. Without faith, we cannot please God. So we have to have enough faith to wait on him, knowing whatever he has for us is going to be better than whatever we think we're supposed to have. Our God knows what we need and he knows when we need it. And so when we wait patiently in obedience to him, there's a reward in there that, and it may not look like what we think it's supposed to look like. See, we have these, this picture in our head of what it's supposed to look like, what our life is supposed mm -hmm. to look like. We, we've, we plan it all out. We've got this whole map, right? And God is like, no, that's not, that's not what I have for you. And so we need to be waiting expectantly of what he has for us because it's going to be good. Our God is good and he knows better than we do what we need when we need it. And so that is my encouragement to all of us, you know, because many times we'll say, oh, I'm listening. I'm listening for God. I'm listening, you know, uh, Lord, speak, speak, Lord, speak for your servant is listening, right? We say that, but do we really mean those words? Do we really mean it? Are we listening for what God has to say or are we listening to what we want to hear? Because maybe God has already spoken. Maybe he's already given us what we're supposed to do. But we're not hearing it because it's not what we want to hear. Right? I've done that too. I've heard him tell me something very specifically that I was supposed to do. And I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. So guess what? I didn't do it. And then a year later, he made it very clear to me again. Like, 
you need to make sure you do this. And that time I did it. And since then, I have not been intentionally disobedient to my Lord and Savior. And I pray that I never will be again, that I will follow whatever it is that he tells me to do and do it quickly without hesitation. But again, we need to be listening, like truly listening, not just saying we're listening or not. Sometimes I think we even believe that we are, but we're not abiding closely enough with him to truly hear him clearly. We're not undistracted, right? We have to get to a place of being able to shut the world out and everything the world is saying, right? Because the, the voices in the culture are loud, loud, loud. Even friends and family, those voices can be loud. Everybody wants to tell you their wisdom or what they think we need to do. But we we have to listen. Yeah, it's, it's fine to consult with others, godly friends and family, godly wisdom from others. But we seek the Lord first. The Lord will place people in our lives to give us help, to give us resources that we need. But we go to him. He gives us what we need. We go to him first and we seek him first and he gives it to us. But we need to make sure that we are truly listening for his voice. And not what, what our flesh is speaking, not what we want to hear in our own hearts and minds. Listen for the Lord. Listen for the Lord because he truly has our best interests. He truly knows what we need at all times, in all spaces, in every single situation. He knows because he is the God of the universe and he is so mindful of us. Even though he created every single one of us, he knows every hair on our heads. He is mindful of every detail of our lives. Nothing can slip past him. So we wait. We wait while he strengthens us, while he helps us in the waiting. Our all-knowing father, he is perfect. He is perfect in every way. And so we wait because he knows what we need. And so I just wanted to encourage us with uh Isaiah is one of my favorite books of the Bible one of my very very favorites and uh we know that Isaiah was a prophet in the Old Testament and he was very accustomed to warning and instructing the people of God but the Lord also wanted for his people to receive comfort and strength and so the book of Isaiah is um pretty much divided in three sections. And so chapters one through 35 are prophetic with a theme of condemnation. Chapters 36 through 39 are historic with a theme of confiscation. And then chapters 40 to 66 are messianic and the theme is consolation. And so I'm going to read a very popular uh, portion of, of chapter 40 um, that comforts us, helps us in our waiting. Um, and that's what the Lord wants for his people. He wants us to know his love, to know his nature, which is love and compassion. And, and uh, although he, he's our, he's our heavenly father, and so he's going to discipline us. He is going to um, make sure that we're on the right path. So in his love, he still disciplines. In his compassion, he comforts. He is a God of love. That's who he is. He's love. And so he wants us to be equipped for the work he has for us. And so that's why he gives us his word, which, which is alive and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. And so we have that word to look to, to give us all that we need to live a godly life. It gives us encouragement. It gives us instruction and it rebukes us. So we use it for correction. We use it for everything. It is our guide. It is our guide to living life according to the will of God. And so I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 40 and I am going to start in verse... 25. I actually wanted to read the whole thing, but I'm not going to take up all the time because this is prayer night and not teaching night. So uh, starting in verse 25, 
To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all of these? Who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name? Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired and weary or weary. He will not grow tired or weary. We may grow tired or weary, but our Lord does not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. So that's us. We may be weary in the waiting, but he gives us strength to keep waiting, to keep waiting on him for the answer that we need. He gives us strength when we are weary. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. I believe some versions say, but those who wait, waiting in hope, we wait in hope. We wait in by faith on what the Lord has. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And so when we wait and we hope in the Lord, we trust him by faith. It says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And so let's just believe the word of the Lord. We believe his word because his word is the truth. His word never fails. And so we stand on it on every promise that he has given us. And we believe because our God is good and he loves us. So let's go to prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that we get to celebrate you, not just on Easter Sunday, but every day. Lord, that we celebrate the gift of our Savior, the sacrifice he made going to that cross. Oh Lord, what he endured for us, may we not take it lightly. May we not just get all dressed up on Easter, taking our pictures, and then Monday comes around and the rest of the week and we just go about our merry way as if we do not have a Savior that died for us. May we live in light of the cross every day of our lives. Lord, that in the waiting, that we would not grow tired and weary. That in the waiting, we remember who you are and who you are in us. That there is nothing that you cannot do. And there is nothing that we cannot endure in the waiting because of who you are and because of Jesus. He is the one who knows everything about what we go through in this life. We have a Savior that can relate to every single thing that we must walk through. He endured so much pain and persecution Lord, we can't even imagine it. We can't even wrap our minds around it. So, Father, help us to remember, to be reminded every day that we can go through whatever it is that we're going through. Our grieving, job issues, issues with our children, 
issues with our homes or anything it is, Father God. Illness, Lord. So many are walking through illness, Father, and sometimes it looks hopeless. Sometimes it's just scary. But we wait. We wait on you in faith. Because our hope is in you. You are our rock. You are so good and so loving and kind, Lord. Thank you for being patient with us, Father, because we can be so stubborn. We can be so disobedient. We want to do our own thing. We want to rush ahead of you, Lord, and you are so patient with us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for drawing us back and putting us back on the right path. For allowing us second chances and third chances. And you just keep, you keep us, Lord. You sustain us and you strengthen us. Lord, help us to keep the distractions out of our minds so that we can keep our minds set on you and what you have for us so that we can walk according to your will. We all have this picture in our minds of how we think sh things should be, but your way will mm. always be the best way, even if it doesn't look like what we want it to, even if it's scary. We can face our fear knowing that you will walk with us through whatever it is, that you will strengthen us and you will provide for everything that we need. You are a God of provision, of healing, of deliverance. Mm -hmm. And you take such good care of your children. You lavish your love on us so undeserved. Jesus died on that cross, taking our penalty, our sin, each and every one of us. We didn't deserve it. We don't deserve it. And we can't ever repay it. But we can live a life of worship unto you. We can live a life of true and proper worship. It's a living sacrifice by listening, waiting patiently, trusting, walking by faith. We want to please you, Lord. We want to be obedient. We want to hear you and follow you. Because your ways, your ways are perfect. You know each one of us, what we need. You know every detail of our lives. We think we know what we need. We don't know. We don't know. We think we know what we want. How many times, how many times did I want something so badly? And I can look back now and say, oh, thank you, Lord, that you didn't give me that. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you knew better than me. Thank you, Lord. I can never, ever thank you enough. Mm. I can never repay you. Except to live, to live according to your will, to walk in your ways and to tell people, to tell people about the goodness of my Lord and Savior, to testify of how you have brought me through so many things, so, so many things. Oh, your goodness, Lord. I could spend days talking about your goodness, talking about 
how you rescued me, how you saved me from myself. Oh, the goodness, the goodness. Thank you, Father God, that you loved me when I couldn't love myself. And Lord, I wait expectantly, expectantly for all the things to come, for the prodigals to come home, for the promises, the promises, Lord. I stand firm on your promises and I know that your goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. You are good. You're amazing. And you still perform miracles. You still perform miracles. Let us not forget that there is nothing impossible for you. So we pray in faith. We pray for healing. We pray for strongholds to be broken. We pray for addiction, Lord. People in addiction to be free, Lord. Free from addiction. Free to live as you created them with purpose, Lord. To walk this earth and and with a great testimony of how you broke them free from the bonds of addiction, from the prison of anxiety and depression. Oh, Lord, that we would not medicate ourselves, but we would seek you. And I don't mean medication as in prescription medication for anxiety or depression. I mean that we would self-medicate with drugs and alcohol, Lord, I ask that you would strengthen us in our weariness. That you would help us to help others, those of us who have been freed from addiction, from strongholds. Lord, that you would make us bold in our testimonies, that we would encourage others and love on others and show them, Lord, who you are. And the hope that we have, what you have done for us, and what you can do for them. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing right now. I thank you that you are saving souls right now. That you are breaking strongholds right now. Lord, that you are raising up these children to be mighty warriors for your kingdom. Disciples who will spread the good news throughout this earth. Yes, revival, revival that starts in our hearts and we speak it. We pro pro proclaim the good news. We proclaim the wonders and the miracles and the joy of the Lord. We proclaim it and we spread it like wildfire. Lord, bring people around those who need it. Bring people around those who have lost loved ones in the recent shooting in Louisville today, I believe. Lord, that you would bring people around them. Lord, unite that community together to love on one another. That they would feel your love envelop them, Father God. They would feel your comfort, bring a sense of overwhelming peace, joy, joy that will come. It may not come today or tomorrow, but joy will come in the morning because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Father, I ask that you would continue to bless Ashley and Erica in Nicaragua. Lord, that you would bless their hands, that you would bless their hearts and minds, that you would continue to work in and through both of them, Lord, as they serve humbly to the people of Nicaragua, that they would minister, Lord, mm -hmm. out of a fullness, Lord, the fullness of what you have poured into them and continue to pour into them, that they would just overflow 
overflow, Lord, with words of encouragement, of love, with humility that they would continue to equip and train up the people of Nicaragua to preach the word, to spread the word, to speak the name Jesus, and that the seeds that are planted will continue mm. to just multiply, spread the good news all over that region, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for your protection and your provision and that they would have a beautiful time with testimonies that they will bring home to us to tell of the wonders of what you have done again. Lord, we thank you. We thank you and we praise you for what you're doing all over this earth. Lord, we thank you for the missionaries that are doing your work day in and day out, that you would strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them when they might get weary, Lord, that they would feel your presence and that you would just continue to pour into them, encourage them. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being able to be a part of what you're doing. You don't need us to do any of it, but we get to do it. We get to serve you. We get to love on others because of the love you give us. And I thank you, Father. We give you all the praise, all the praise and the glory. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, amen and amen. Well, I hope that there are some folks that come back and join me in this uh, live prayer. Um, it is a joy and always a pleasure to be here to pray live on Facebook, just to even have the ability to do so. And I thank our Heavenly Father for everything that he gives us. And I hope you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful rest of this week. And I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.